color charts, why would you want to use one? Well, <laughs> I actually purchased uh, the original Color Checker Passport. x right sent me, so I didn't pay for this with my own money, full disclosure, the Color Checker Passport video, and I've been working with that now for about a week or so, and just wanted to kind of show you what the value of this, this type of tool is, both in terms of using it during production when you're shooting and also in post-production. In this case, let's look at the post-production. Here is where the white balance is pretty much on. And then here's another shot I did where that you can see the white balance is clearly a little bit off. Well, here I am in Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm not gonna go in depth about how to use this, but kind of more show you some of the possibilities here. And perhaps in the future, if there's interest, we will go into a little bit more depth. But for example here, got the white balance off just a little bit. So how can I fix that? Well, with the Color Checker Passport video, and in this case, Color Finale, which is a plugin for color grading in Final Cut Pro 10. I can actually just grab this effect, drop it onto this clip, and then I can zoom into my color chart a little bit here. Let's just uh, line up the chart here. I can actually tell Color Finale where the color chart is and we can do some automatic correction here really quick. Let me just show you. So once I've lined that up, I just wanna make sure the all the circles are in the right squares. And this is really helpful, this uh, interface here, because they actually show you where each of these should be. So the green circle should be in the green square. And that's helpful if you've got someone holding the chart upside down, which in production sometimes happens. <laughs> um, so once I've got that selected, I can just click the match and watch what happens to the image. Boom, we're much, much closer to our overall uh, to a neutral color balance. So definitely made some progress there. And of course we can then come into um, color finale here. And if I wanted to bring up the curves and just add a little contrast, because it looks like we're a little bit on the flat side still, we could pretty quickly do something like that and get to the look that we want. So that can really speed up your post workflow if you run into situations like that. Also, here is an example of some log footage. This is out of my Panasonic GH4 using the V-Log L. Actually, it was recorded in a Shogun externally in 422 10-bit color, um, which is usually pretty helpful when you're doing log. And what we could do is something very similar here. I could take the color finale effect, drop it on this particular clip, Let's zoom in here real quick. Go ahead and drop this onto the chart. Whoops, that corner goes there, 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 and there. Just make sure we're lined up. Looks like we're pretty good there. Go ahead and click match. Let's pull back out. And we're definitely much closer than we were. We could also come in here. This one's looking still a little bit desaturated. We can maybe come in here and bump up the saturation a touch, closer to reality. Also could do the same thing in terms of contrast here if I needed to add a little bit more contrast. So there's just a quick example of some of the things you can do with a color chart in post to really kind of help you quickly get your white balance taken care of and get to where you wanna be. So that's one example. Now, not only is this a helpful tool for quickly, you know, doing your post processing, getting the color where you need it to be. But it's also a great learning tool. And let me just kind of show you what I mean here. So here is now DaVinci Resolve. And actually DaVinci Resolve has this color match panel and these tools. And it's very similar to what I just showed you in uh, Final Cut Pro 10 with Color Finale. However, they don't yet support the x right Color Checker video. They have some others that they support, but I have. it is my understanding that they will be adding support for the Color Checker Passport video in the near future. In any case, as a learning tool, there are a lot of things you can learn here about color and about post-processing and about uh, camera calibration, camera matching, all sorts of things here with a color chart. And so I really am an advocate of, if you don't have one, consider... Um, you know, putting aside some money for a budget for one. They're not cheap if you get a quality one, um, but they're definitely a tool that will help you to understand what really is happening with color in your camera and your lighting um, and in post-production. So let me give you an example here. We could also manually do the white balance. Here's that same clip that we showed before. And let me just... Um, zoom in here a little bit so we can see that we can see again we've had this sort of brownish and in fact if we come here to the click on this little icon here that brings up our curves and once we've brought up our curves let's go ahead and select our qualifier tool which is right here qualifier 
Um, and then what we can do here to set the white balance is we can actually, or the color balance in general, we can come into our midtones and our highlights especially, and we can also look at our shadows. But what I like to do is take the qualifier to the, the gray here, the middle gray. Go ahead and click on that. And you can see down here in our curve, we're showing something interesting. Three dots showed up in addition to the white one. Um, but our red dot is sitting a little bit higher vertically than the green dot, which means we have more red than green in this white patch, or the, sorry, the gray patch here. And then we also have more green than blue in this gray patch here. And you can actually see that represented down here in this waveform monitor. This is a red bar, or this is red right here, green and blue, and this actually represents this gray bar here. And the um, the white bar is represented also here at the top. Now, one thing I can do before I get started is I can see here that we actually are probably running a little bit hot here. We probably want to pull the gain down just a little bit. So let's do that so that we're back in the realm of legal here. And what I can do then is to white balance, or to actually in, the, in this case, mid-tone balance or gray balance, I can actually align these three dots, the red, green, and blue, vertically. Now I don't wanna move them horizontally, I just wanna move them vertically. So I'm gonna pull this red down, so it's at about the same uh, position as the green, and that means I'm gonna take this blue and push it up. And you can see here, if you're looking at our image now, it's already looking much more neutral, much more natural in terms of color. Now we can also do the same thing here with the white strip. Just go ahead and qualify that, or put the qualifier on that. Um, what we can do then is come into our different colors. We can see our red is pretty much pegged up in the upper right-hand corner here. Green also pegged up in the corner. And then blue is sitting down a little bit lower. So let's pull our blue up just a bit. And then let's pull our red and green down. Now, what you'll notice is that when we do that, we'll just go ahead and leave them about right there. This is actually lined up now. Remember, those were separated before. And again, looking at our image now, we're much closer to a, a very good white balance. So a good starting point as far as color correction is concerned. And then we could now move on to color grading and stylizing the image. Now we might also do the same thing here for our shadows. Now this is gonna be perfect black, so that's gonna be a tough one. We actually, I would typically go here to more of a matte black that's not quite as dark. And you'll see, we get some here. We're already pretty, pretty good on that, so we could just tweak it a little bit and that's gonna be good. So there we are. And we're probably at this point ready to go ahead and do some color grading. So. That I think is a really useful learning tool. Now there's one other thing I wanted to show you here that is also a very useful learning tool, especially when you're getting used to a new camera or learning your camera in a little bit more depth. And that is, I like to actually come in here and isolate this first row. This is a row that they put on the color checker that actually represents the colors in your vector scope. Now a vector scope is gonna show you where your different color, you know, your different chroma values are coming out and their saturation. So for example, here, if I just pull that back a little bit, you can see here, here are my skin tones and it's along the skin tone indicator here between red and yellow. So things are looking pretty good there. We have some kind of blue cyans over here, some green here, obviously the green jacket is definitely prominent in this one. And um, that's all great, but I wanna see where these colors are falling out because that will help me to understand what my particular camera is doing in terms of color science and uh, how it's just sort of reacting to colors in general. So the way we can do that is we can come over here and to create a power window, which is essentially like a mask, if you're not familiar with that. Um, and again, this is not like an in-depth <laughs> DaVinci Resolve tutorial, but just something again to kind of whet your appetite and, and uh, kind of illustrate why a color chart can actually be a really helpful learning tool. So I'm gonna just take this power window and I wanna mask off everything except for this row of colors here. So I'm just gonna draw this box around here. And I can zoom in here some, just get a nice clean box around there. Okay, once I've done that, um, what I'll do is I'll come up here and use the highlight feature. And what that'll do is that'll mask everything else out except for that bar. Now, when I look at my scopes here, what is represented is just that row of colors. And look what happens. This is interesting here. So the yellow 
is shown right here and you can see this is the yellow box right here and that actually looks pretty well lined up it's a little bit undersaturated relative to some of the others at least the red now the red here is a little bit off so we can see here that my Panasonic GH4 is actually doing something a little different with the reds. It's actually pulling it a little bit more towards yellow. Still definitely distinctly red, but a little closer to yellow than um, we would actually be targeting. The magenta is definitely undersaturated. Everything that's closer to the center is less saturated. Everything closer to the edge of the vector scope is actually more saturated. Um, that's not looking bad. It's actually, you know, in terms of trajectory, it would actually hit the magenta box, although it is a little bit less saturated. Our blues are actually off a little bit. Our cyans are looking pretty good. And our greens are looking okay too. So that's just sort of an interesting thing. And we'll talk about this in a lot more detail in a future episode. But you kind of can start to learn what it is your camera does in particular lighting situations as far as its color processing is concerned. So just sort of an interesting sort of gee whiz thing for now, <laughs> but at some time in the future, we'll look at that in more detail and kind of what the practical impact of that is. Go ahead and show you. Here is the before image. And here is after, once we've done that color balancing. So I hope that was helpful for you. Go ahead and leave questions down below and anything you'd like to learn more about. I'm, I am not an expert colorist by any means, um, but I found that once I got my color chart and started working with it a little bit more, I've definitely learned a lot and it's made things a lot easier for me, both in production, getting white balance just right, and in post-production, if I did miss, <laughs> um, how I can line that up and sort of match camera to camera as well. So... Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. Thanks for checking out this episode. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.